So as I said before, I'm going to empty the floor of this barn. It's going to be a messy, messy, dusty job, hence the mask and the gloves. Um, I try not to hang myself on this piece of wire. Try and get that down. But anyway, I'm going to get this floor cleared up. Um, locks on my side, apparently, because I've just uncovered a horseshoe. So I shall hang that up somewhere with some luck. We'll just stick that there for the moment. Start by clearing up the wood and then I might just rake it all up into one corner just to see what the floor's like. Uh, the buckets are full up at the moment with sawdust, I think, from Adrian's saw. So I'll show you what I can reveal underneath. Unfortunately, that was disappointing. It is only concrete down here. I'm not sure what I expected to find. Uh, apart from an animal feeder, a lucky horseshoe, and we have two piles. One of old wood, rotten wood, and this pile I shall use up in the orchard in the beds for the vegetables. So now that we haven't discovered anything in here, I'm going to see if I can have a go at this room. Might not get this one's finished there. As you can see, I've made a good start, but I am quite tired now. Uh, and as, suspe as suspected, it is cobbles under this area. And over here, it goes to bigger stone under the fireplace. As it's quite thick with all of this dust, straw, old animal bedding, I'm guessing, I'm going to let this dry out now and hopefully bring Adrian back so he can give me a hand another day. But it's a good start. We found some newspapers, but they're not particularly old. One was 1986 and this one is let me see so eaten i can't tell that looks like a local newspaper in mayen oh there's a date there oh even newer 1992 so nothing special about those so that's it for today and we'll come back to this a later day so as they say to be continued Carol's just reminded me that I've got some parquet flooring well not parquet some oak flooring uh, stairs which I remove which I probably won't be putting back down again in the small room on the very top floor Coins of work out coming up here so uh, let's go and have a look and hope I can use it because I'm running out and I don't want to buy new wood, which I'm pretty sure will never match. Ah, yes. I have. And that's a stroke of luck. It is the right thickness. So uh, a couple of them will see me through again. They're probably about three meters high nearly or two and a half i can get quite a lot of sections out of that so good great okay well remembered she put it in a so i put it in a safe place so now i have the task of making a lot of these missing pieces i mean i made a few up at the top row but um i've got quite a chunk now so uh quite a lot of people have been asking me i just explain how i'm doing it For those who want to know i'll quickly try and do this for you uh there's a pretty much what I could call a mask, but I've just taken that out. Now, the distance from there to there is pretty consistent at 360 mil, which is a good thing. The only thing that does very slightly vary is the width across here, but nearest damage is 95 mil. Now I did run out of this, but 
Uh, an early video I showed you, I found some or forgot I had some up on the top floor. Hence a piece here. So I'm just going to double check. So I don't have a vernier or anything, but that's the exact width there. And without splitting hairs, near as damn it, that's that one there. So what I'm going to do is, the first thing I'll do is I'll trim a 45 degree angle on there. So I've got something to work off. And then uh, I'll worry about that later, but I'll explain that when I um, take it back to the uh, into the salon to see how I do that one. So I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll cut this end here first, clean it up, um, run it through the thicknesser, get it the same. Now, the only thing is that this might, sorry, this tongue is not in the same place as these. But again, it's not massively out, so I'll just uh, sand it or uh, run it through the router again and just adjust. The good thing is that um, although the tongue and groove is there, when they were being floated across the joists, because I've got these all this pretty much all the same thickness, they are sitting on the OSB board. So although the tongue and groove is there and it's great, it's not absolutely critical uh, as they can't drop down because of that board, the OSB board. So uh, as long as I make sure that when they sit flush on there, they're all level, it's what I've been doing, um, we shouldn't have a problem. So as I said, the tongue groove isn't absolutely critical, but if I can get it in the same place, why not? Right, so they're cut at 45, as you can see there. I'm doing, um, always cutting them slightly oversized. So the one I'm making is slightly bigger and then at least I've got room for adjustment and, and see if there's any bits in there I don't like, although this one's looking good. Now, all of these pieces of timber that come across, they are either, either end, turn it this way, they have a tongue, or when it goes the other way, they have the groove. But, always a but, the one I'm just starting on, the very top row, which uh, is A, <laughs> makes sense. I'm just finishing off. So I've done down the end and I'm on the last, I just had to make these last two. So I've just made this one, should have videoed it, but I'll show you doing this one. And that will fill the gap there and then it stops. And then there's a framework that comes down that holds it all together, which uh, again might cause me a challenge, but don't worry about that. So on this one, this is the only row at the moment, or apart from the very end row, which is whatever that N or M or somewhere, it'll have a groove one end, but a tongue on the other end. So this one's slightly unique. So I'm just gonna uh, pop that in place just a moment to line up and then I can uh, start doing the tongue on there. Right, back in my room. <laughs> so as I uh, as just said, uh, we need to now route in a groove that comes along there and goes down that edge. So it locates at the top. I've just checked this angle, those 45 degrees, or just like double check that it does seem reasonably snug against the uh, framework in the salon, which it was. So uh, the next job is clean it up and then put a groove in this end. Right, that's the groove in the end that I need uh, at the top. Uh, next thing I need to do is now to check, because these these pieces of timber that I've been using, these oaks from up, uh, upstairs and other floors, they are not the same tongue. So an example what I'm saying is they won't go together. That's the best I'll do. Only being the fact that I need to open up this groove on the other timber. If you put them there, all I'll do is I'll open up the way because they're pretty level at the top. So there's no point touching the top part of the groove. So I'll just open up the bottom part. And then once they go together, we can then take it back in the other room and get more of an accurate adjustment, uh, sorry, a, a, a line for when I do the trim at the end with the tongue. So next job now is to open up those. The one I want to attach it to, I've just taken uh, out off the floor and brought back in here. Now I can be a bit more accurate. So, um, uh, literally just a case of knocking them up 
and then uh, making sure that this reasoning tie, I mean, they don't all go absolutely perfect together. And then I can make sure that I can trim this exactly right. I said, they're not all the same. They do vary, so I can't just do a whole load in one go. I can't, I have to do each one individually. So we'll get this tapped up, put it together, and then I can put it through the thicknesser using the one I've got as a, as a master. So it's nice and flat together. And uh, if I put them through together, I can just take a skim off there and uh, then we can move on, as I said to, putting it out down on the floor and giving it this last trim. Right, planed up. Pretty damn good, I'm happy with that. It did throw up a few marks here. But again, I can fill them, not worried about that. The age look, we've all got our little bits missing. Right, so uh, now, take it in the salon. We can get a bit more of an accurate line here to join in with the next one. And then we can trim that. These are the two pieces. This is the one I've just been making. This is the one I just made earlier. I've popped in. And as it comes to an end. And then this piece here will run all the way down to hold all of the end pieces. Now my problem is I've got to make sure that those all end at the same place. What is that reference? I thought I could measure from this line back to the other framework, but that could be risky. You now these are all handmade, they won't make them together. So I've set this up as best I can. What I have got as a reference, I've just remembered, this corner, so each corner has its own pattern, the one that's underneath the, don't even ask that, candelabra, I think uh, Carol calls it, in the corner. So this corner over here, there's a slight notch out of this square. And I can only imagine that it's to do with where the radiator came up, pipe. I can't see any other reason. Um, 19% sure I've got it the right way round. In other words, meaning the these lines come in towards the middle of the room. Um, I can't see any other reason why that's there. And I'm pretty sure also that down, oh, Carol and her scaffolding, always in the way. Coming down here in front of this doorway, would have been another trim like that. And then from there, I'm gonna go with straight pieces, straight to back to the um, doorway, like I did in the uh, dining room. I can't guarantee that's right, but it makes a lot of sense. Then these, this pattern here will be locked in with the tongue and groove here which actually, yes, there's a groove there as well. So, back on this again. So I'm pretty sure there'll be a long piece down there, which actually ties in pretty good with the end of that. So I'm gonna go with it. I don't have any other, and anyone else has got any suggestions, although you're probably lost as much as I am. So what that does mean now is, now I'm gonna put a, um, I've put a laser line on. So from that edge of that framework coming across and touch wood, it's, it's not bad. I'm gonna tweak it a little bit. Um, oh, it's moved actually slightly below. You know, we're talking a four meter distance and I've got a couple of mill play with, so I'm not gonna lose too much sleep on that one. So what it does mean now is I can trim up this one and this one and then the return up and then I'm happy then. Once I've got that correct, I can then start missing, putting in the missing pieces, working my way down. Well, there's my workout for the day, so I don't need to go running. So we've got enough logs now last couple of days. Carol said we've got some cold weather coming in, so anyhow, Carol.
Oh. I want your help. I want everyone. I want this on camera. You want everyone's help? No, They're going to grab a funny. corner each. Funny. So I've made the top curtain. Okay. Okay. And I've measured out the fabric. But I've got a lot left. I know I overordered. When you say measured out as in the length, the drop. Yeah. Okay. I know I've overordered, but there's a lot left. So you're thinking, where have I gone wrong? I just want you to double check it with me before I cut it. Cut it. I've measured it three oh, times now. No pressure then. Okay, so I have to measure I have to line up this flower, which is here and here. Okay? Okay. It doesn't reach the top because obviously it's gathered. So. <laughs> oh no. I don't want to do it wrong. <laughs> um, I can't I really help three, you. Three layers here, okay? Oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. Still lining it up, look. Mm. One, two, three, half flowers there. Your maths is good, okay. <laughs> oh. So then I come to this bit. Right. Cut it halfway through that one. There, yeah? You hey. agree with me? Uh, pff, when have halfway I ever disagreed with you? One. So it needs to be halfway through that one. But look, I've got like a metre left. Okay, so. Do you agree that that is correct? I've got absolutely no idea what you're going on about. <laughs> is it two sheets of plasterboard? Three sheets? I ain't got a clue. That okay, you lined it up at the top, all three that curtains. Lines that lines up. It's what? Got be, it's got to be right. I'm wondering why you're doubting yourself, which worries me. Um, the extra, did the lady just go, ooh, that's about 16 metres? <laughs> which is why you've got that left oh, over. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all metres and yards. Uh, ooh, make some nice pillows though, wouldn't they, that extra material? Pillows go in beds, cushions go on chairs. Oh, I'm sorry. They'd make some nice cushions, that material you got left over. There. Okay. okay. You agree? Yeah. Yes? Uh, pff, well, if someone's shouting at us, you're doing it wrong, it's too late, because I'm guessing right, it'll be so cut. It's on camera, that's all cut the same length. If one of these ends up a different length... Blame them. It's not my fault. No, blame them. <gasps> you're going for it. I'm going for it. Okay. Yay! So I've got this much left. To make cushions. <laughs> bolsters. Let's have bolsters instead. Are they those We're sausage ask, dogs? Is it a sausage dog? Bolster. Is a what? It's a sausage dog. Half Just missing cushion. legs, yeah. <laughs> Terry's got one of them, I think. <laughs> right. My work is done. Okay, in that case. Everyone can go home now.